Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Now, um, I gotta talk about this whole situation with Diddy and his bodyguards. So I just kind of put together a compilation that I want y'all to watch. So we have, now Mark Curry was not a bodyguard. He was an artist on Bad Boy. Mark Curry has been blasting Diddy for years, right? He came out with a book back in like the early 2000s, like 2005 or something called um, P. Diddy and how he burnt the bad boys of hip hop, you know, dancing with the devil. Um, I never read it, let me be honest, but I heard it was a good book. Um, so that is where he comes in at. Then we also have Gene Deal. I've talked about Gene Deal a few times on this channel. He was Diddy's former bodyguard back when Biggie was alive. So he, this was back in the day, back in like the 90s, you know, he was a bodyguard and he's been blasting Diddy for years. Now we fast forward to modern day and we have Roger Bonds. Roger Bonds is going viral simply because uh, he was named in the lawsuit with Cassie. So Cassie was talking about how Roger Bonds jumped in to kind of, you know, save her or whatever from the situation with Diddy. So we're going to go ahead and listen to all these three gentlemen. Um, shout out to Art, Art of Dialogue. These are his video clips. So we're going to listen to this really quick here with what they had to say. Then I, I want to come back and give my opinion because a lot of this stuff low-key triggered me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and watch this really quick here. He put hands on her. He, she, you know, I mean, to the point where is that nobody was helping her. Now, this is a story that was told to me, bro, by somebody who was there. You know what I'm saying? And they said he put hands on her. Misa was running from him so hard trying to get away from him, she tried to crawl up under a car. You know, Puffy was, you know, Misa was a, a, a like I said, she was a, talented, beautiful girl, bro. And if Puff didn't get his way, you know what I'm saying? He always did that play fighting stuff. You know, he always wanted to, he started off like he play fighting with somebody. You understand? And then as soon as the girl tell him to stop, 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 or whatever like that, then she hits him hard. That's when it started going on. He didn't want Kim to deal with nobody, bro. Was now, I remember when I did my video, I had told y'all about that T from like the early 2000s about Diddy breaking Kim Porter's nose. And so now they're confirming this. Do the same thing. The beatings I could say one time when I know Kim had defended herself. You see a picture on the Internet going with Puff. Right hand is in a bandage because Kim had took the court. The, uh, you know, when you open up wine, the corkscrew. She took the corkscrew and caught him on his wrist. To, and he almost, and I think he had, I know he told some ligament, but he almost hit an artery that came close to the artery. But it was told by people in her camp that he broke Kim's nose on the yacht. So Cassie's story is Cassie's story is Kim's story. Cassie's book is Kim's yeah. book. Wine is back. Okay, we before we go to this, let me go ahead. I want to I want to show y'all Mark um talking about this as well. So that was 143. Okay. So I got to take y'all back to Instagram. Now, for all y'all youngins in the chat, um that is not Mark Curry the comedian and the rapper, are two different people. I see y'all saying, "Oh, he was sick, he almost died." That was Mark Curry the comedian. Even like when I was having Maria create the thumbnail, she found Mark Curry the comedian. I'm like, no, wrong Mark Curry. There's two Mark Currys. So the comedian who is funny as hell, I've seen him live. He's so funny. Yeah, it's two different Mark Currys, everybody. So just for the people who are saying that um, it's the comedian. No, it's the rapper from the 90s. <laughs> All right, so let me share this with y'all real quick. He's saying the same thing about the um, Kim's nose. Hits for Puff. How do you feel about these lawsuits accusing Diddy of abuse? 
What do you think about that? You knowing Diddy, do you think he's capable of doing that, man? Do I think, yeah. <laughs> I think he's very capable of doing it. It's in his character. That's who he is. That's what comes with power. That's what comes with arrogance. That's that's what comes with, you know, what makes him. I seen fights between, will he have an argument, fight with a female, whatever it may be. I seen it with my own friends. But sometimes you say, you know, we all go through things, but once you have a sign of doing it over and over and over again, that's when it becomes a problem. You'd be like, so every relationship that you get in, you, you're violent in them. I was around when, 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 when Cassie was there, I knew Kim Porter before, uh, I knew Puff. Um, I met Misa, but you know, it was a history. When you have a history of the same thing, man, it, it becomes a problem. Speaking of Kim Porter, because you knew Kim Porter, is it true that Diddy broke her nose? Bust her nose, man. Mm. Anytime a man would go out his way to wiretap someone's phone or, or put taps in their homes just to monitor their conversation, that's a sign of insanity. My name is Mark Curry. You know, I'm a former... All right. So now, let me... Come back on the screen. So now we're going to go back, okay, uh, to the video on my desktop. So give me just a second. So, yeah, this is, so everything I was saying in that live stream, these men are confirming it, you know. So, again, people want to keep dragging me about, oh, this is a DD hate channel and this and that. Mm, absolutely not, you know. These are things that have been floating around online for years. Just because y'all just got here, people who were born in the 2000s and under, does not mean that people are just making up stuff on him. Like this, this was spoke about for years, but he has such a strong PR team that people forget about all that stuff. So now everything is coming back now. So um, let me see here, let me share my screen. We're gonna go ahead and finish listening to this. Now this is kind of triggering. I don't like this, but we're gonna go ahead and listen to it here. Go to the, when we go to the club, we used to have these bottles, right? And on this bottle, they'd be, they be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they'd be to have something to make the girls be real real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they'd be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? Then all of the girls is in the club after a while. They all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He was running around just popping pills in their mouth. Pop, pill, 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 pill. And then that was the party. But all of the females that was in, that's what they wanted. That was what party. It was part of the hip-hop culture. We ain't seen nothing wrong with it until Bill Cosby got in trouble. He did one too many. Man, look. <laughs> I used to, let me tell you something. I mean to cut you. This funny. I used to, I used to, you know, we used to be on the road, you know, you'd be like, yo, let me go over to my puff room and see what they doing. And you knock on puff door, he'd be sitting there damn near butt naked. You ever just had a grown ass man answer his hotel door butt naked and they'd be like, come on in. You'd be like, mm, I'll come back. Boom. I'm sitting there butt ass naked. I told him to come on in and he came on in. You'd be like, so what's going on for the day? Acting like you don't notice he there naked. You'd be like, bro, put some clothes on. What are you doing? Well, I don't want to see you naked. Grown man stuff. Yo, that's kind of disrespectful. So when you get, that's that's called the test off. How you make sure you breaking in. Yo, call, call the artist up here to the room, tell him I'm going to have a meeting by my tub. He be in there by the tub and stuff, soaking and stuff. Butt at naked. You be like, how the hell am I supposed to have a meeting with a nick butt naked in the tub? Nah, man, I'll come back, man. It comes a time when you're in a situation that may seem like a good situation, but if you're not waking up happy, or if you disgruntled, or you really don't want to be around that person, you find every excuse to get out of there. And I got diabetes. So my excuse was, I can't be with you every day. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm losing weight. I'm doing that. But in reality, it was, I was sick. I was sick of you. I was sick of everything that was going on around you. I was sick of having to cover up everything that you did. That's what I was sick. Cassie spoke on it. She said, yeah, I jumped on it. I jumped in between it. That wasn't the only time. It was other times. And it was other people. People ask. It's easy. People say, well, why did you stay? Or why did you allow? Or why did you um, keep going? Why did you keep going to work? Why do you keep paying your kids? School fees, well, 
You can't just walk away. It's people that hate being sanitation workers. It's people that hate being police. But why do they still be the police? Because they got bills to pay. This is America. Ain't nothing free. So sometimes you got to stay places even though you don't want to. Now take that. I had a picture and I still got it to this day. And it's six people in the picture. And everybody in that picture is dead except one person. But each person in that picture was killed by another person that was in that picture. Oh. And I keep that picture to this day to look at, to look at, to say, yo, I never trust nobody. All right. So that was the video compilation of, you know, just <laughs> a mess. The whole situation is a mess. I'm going to say this. Okay. This is my feeling about the, um, the Mark Curry part when he was talking about how they would say, okay, we got two different sets of liquor, right? So we have the liquor that's spiked with whatever. Then we had the regular liquor and they were told, you know, don't drink from that. That's for the girls. And then the girls would drink that liquor. Then all of a sudden they'd be super loose. They'd be wanting to pop pills. That is really disturbing. That's really disturbing to hear because again, it makes me feel like, okay, so are y'all really coming out because y'all really care about these girls? Because why wasn't anything done back then? You know, like if you're in that situation and you see a lot of these girls that are coming to these parties, they're really coming genuinely as fans, you know, because when you're a fan, you see your idol a certain way, you know, you're seeing the person that you see in the music videos or in the movies. And that is the idea that you have of them, right? But a lot of these people in the industry, it's like really Jekyll and Hyde. And so for them to like kind of sit back and watch that as um, grown men, to me is really disturbing. And the other bodyguard, Roger Bonds, he's saying that, well, he needed to pay his bills. And I definitely get that. But at what point in time, once you see that something is not right, do you remove yourself? You know, do you only remove yourself once the situation's not beneficial to you, you know? And I think that's the part, like, I just, I don't like. I don't like. I think that's the part that's really disturbing and very criminal because it's almost like all of these men sat by and they watched this happen, but it was okay because it wasn't their daughters. It wasn't their girlfriends. It wasn't their mothers. It wasn't their sisters. And, um... This is why I say a lot of times I don't give a fuck about any of these rappers' daughters like that when they try to be overprotective and, oh, my daughter and I got my shotgun. I said that a few streams ago, like, nah, y'all don't care about other people's daughters, but now everybody's supposed to have all this undue respect and, you know, hands off your child, but you had no problem finger fucking somebody else's child in public in the park and allowing yourself to be photographed, the game. You know, you had no problem doing all types of ratchet shit to like other people's daughters and other people's mothers and sisters, but now your child is off limits, you know? You gotta, you, especially men who have daughters, you have to treat women how you want your daughters to be treated. Cause like I always say, the same tears that you cause a woman will be the same tears that you'll be wiping off your daughter's face. And that's real talk. And I feel like a lot of these men are not trying to atone, right, and make amends because of all the things they were involved in, the way they treated women. So whenever I see guys going super hard on their daughters, that's because they wasn't shit as husbands and boyfriends. You know, even that whole situation with T.I. and his daughter when, you know, it ended up being supposedly a joke when he was talking about getting her hymen checked. There was nothing funny about that. Like, you were smashing some other father's daughter's hymen. Why is your daughter's hymen all of a sudden off, you know, not available you know so it's the whole thing is just sad it's just sad so it's very it's very disturbing like i i get it that they're coming out and they're telling their truth you know they were witness to all this but it's also disturbing to know that grown folks witnessed criminal behavior because all of this is criminal and everybody just sat there so it just shows that a lot of people's silence can be bought a lot of people's integrity can be brought and as long as the money is coming in, see no evil, hear no evil. That's the same thing that happened, you know, with R. Kelly. That's why I said it shouldn't just be R. Kelly should not be the only one in jail. A lot of mofos need to be in jail with him, including the staff, the old man who kept crying online that took Aaliyah to go, you know, get the fake birth certificate. London on the tracks, mama, because she was out here at the mall, you know what I'm saying, playing R. Kelly's wing woman. 
luring young girls in for R. Kelly. He couldn't, he, that R. Kelly can't even read or write. Let's keep it real. He's good with music. He can make music, but he can't read. So who was booking these plane tickets for R. Kelly? Who was doing all this stuff for R. Kelly? And it seemed like a lot of people were cool with it while the checks were running. Even the, like I said, there's two sets of R. Kelly victims that I rock with. There's the ones that I feel like are real victims. And then there's this new breed of victims that I don't give a fuck about. And y'all not going to shame me to give a fuck about Faith, Rogers, and half the other girls talking. Because they were chasing a bag. And they got burnt in the end. Everybody has been known since the damn 2000s that R. Kelly wasn't shit. So if you're going to take your grown ass over there to R. Kelly, because you're thinking, you know, I'm different, not me, that's on you. So I've always told you there's two sets of R. Kelly victims for me. There's the old school set, like the braider, who was ard and disrespected, Aaliyah, a lot of the younger ones. But these new girls, they can kick rocks. I don't give a fuck about Faith Rogers. Fuck that bitch. Um, Because y'all know when she tried to get up in my DMs and talk tough. So I feel like at the end of the day, you have people who are in positions of power who abuse it. You have people who run to certain things because they want the fame. They want the proximity to fame. And as soon as the money dried up, as soon as he wasn't able to, you know, cut them a check and, you know, pay for, you know, their breast implant upgrades and all the shit he was paying for, then everybody wanted to jump ship and play victim. And that's the part I don't respect. Like if the person is a messed up person, the person needs to be a messed up person. They can't be messed up with this instance, but then in this instance, they're cool. So y'all was cool with everything he allegedly did to Leah and everybody else. So you still chose to mess with this man. But then when you get burnt too, now I'm supposed to cry? Absolutely the fuck not. Like they say, fat meat is greasy. So anybody still messing with, with Diddy after all of this information has been coming out about him? Because what Cassie did, she basically opened up a whole can of worms with that lawsuit. So if Carisha wants to sit there and still defend him and run behind him, that's on her. But I will not be crying any tattoo tears. Because at the end of the day, everybody's grown. So people choose what they want to deal with, what they want to endure. That's on them. But I think it's really, really sad that women can see other women being in these situations and getting abused and going through it. And they're still ready and willing to line up because they think that somehow they're different. You know, they're above the abuse. They're above the belittling. And, you know, he did that to her. He would never do that to me. Well, he can do that to you, especially if he has a pattern of this. Um, from what he was saying, Misa went through a lot of abuse. It got so bad that Misa had to run underneath the car to get away from him. I'm sure that at some point in time, you know, Kim may have witnessed some of that or knew what was going on with Misa. Because if you if you go back to Wendy Williams' old book. I remember that because I still have the book somewhere, The Wendy Williams Experience. She used to write books back in the day and like really put the industry on blast. And I remember her talking about how when Misa and Diddy were together, Kim was a side chick. But folks ain't ready for that conversation. Y'all go back and read some of Wendy Williams' old books because she was putting a lot of stuff in those books back in the day. So I wonder, you know, if that's one of those situations where she felt she could change him and she ended up getting the same man that Misa had. Because I didn't know that until Mark Curry said something, I didn't know he was also, you know, whooping on Misa. So the whole situation is sad. I don't know if y'all remember that from the book. Yeah, look, somebody said, Sister Sola said, yes, that's old New York tea. Yes, if y'all was around back then, y'all remember, she was the side chick. He was with Misa. But like I said, folks ain't ready for that conversation. When we speak the truth, then we're seen as, you know, hating and being messy. But yeah, Lady Hotep says, I read that first book. Yes, remember that in that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Corinne Steffens. Yep, even her book, she put a lot of stuff in there as well. So I don't know, I just find it very interesting that all of this stuff is coming out now. You know, um... It's sad. I hope that all these women get justice. I don't feel bad for him at all. I don't feel bad for what he's going through. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's 
couldn't happen to a better person because he's taken so much advantage of people over the years. And the thing I don't understand is you're rich already. How much money do you need? You can't take half this stuff to the grave with you. Like imagine if he would have just been a fair person. Imagine if he would have just paid everybody their worth. But instead he wanted to do sneak stuff. Put his mom and his son on publishing that they did not earn. Meanwhile, the artists who put their blood, sweat and tears and their writing and their skills into the music that we all still love to this day, their family is seeing none of that generational wealth. You know, so it, it's greed. But again, I don't want to make this just a knock on Diddy. Um, there's so many people in the industry. It's some of your faves. Like y'all be so shocked at just some of the stories that I've heard and I've been told. And I know the things that people have told me, they're not lies, but I'm not messy. So I don't bring shit to the internet. I'm not looking to, you know, drop exclusives and all that weird shit. People know they can talk to me. I'm not, I'm never going to bring it up. That's their story to tell. But there's a lot of just really deviant shit. That's why I've never wanted to be a part of the industry. I don't care about any of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I've always rolled solo dolo, you know, but, um, there's a lot of these people, they, they're straight up Jekyll and Hyde. If you knew some of the things that go on behind the scenes, you would not idolize these people. That's why I say you don't idolize anybody. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.